It's been way too long since I reviewed a Campbelltown scotch, and I picked this bottle up recently on the same shopping trip as the Glengarry from last week's video. So let's do this. Welcome to Whiskey Riffs. If you're new here, I'm Kevin, and I always appreciate people stopping by and watching my videos. Thank you so much. This week, I have a Campbelltown whiskey, which there are not that many out there, so it's always a pleasure to pull one out and give them a review. This is a 15-year-old single malt scotch from Glen Scotia. It is made on Campbelltown, and Campbelltown should give us a few different notes than we've been tasting in the, well, I've been tasting, you've been enjoying watching, hopefully, my recent run of Highland Scotch whiskeys. Uh, you'll get some of those same notes, the same malted notes and other things, but there's also more sea influence there, so maybe some brininess, saltiness. I don't know, I haven't opened this bottle yet, and I'll do that in just a second. Like the Glengarry, this was one of those Scotch purchases that was kind of off the cuff. I didn't expect to go into the store and pull this out, but I said, look at that. There's a nice Campbelltown scotch on the shelf and I really want to try one because I just don't have enough Campbelltown in my life. That's all there is to it. <laughs> all right, let's dig into this. Well, that was not easy. <laughs> Boy, it took a lot of work to get off. I don't know, sometimes they're just too stamped on. It's really stuck on the cork, too. So we'll just leave it there. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Never mind. All right. The Glen Scotia 15 is a 46% ABV whiskey. It's non-chill filtered. It's natural colored. And I paid $100 for it at the whiskey shop in San Francisco. Uh, like I said in the intro, it was on the same shopping trip as the Glen Geary. And uh, I wasn't planning on walking in there and buying those two bottles of whiskey. But I had something else on order. And you know, you just have to look around when you're in the shop. And oftentimes I see too many bottles that I actually wanna buy. Luckily my bike is usually the transportation of these shops and it has limited space in the bike bags on the sides of the wheels. So I limited myself to two extra bottles and I'm thrilled that I did because I just don't review enough Campbelltown whiskeys lately. Now the American Oak cast for this should give it a very oaky flavor. I don't know if they're ex-bourbon or not. It didn't say that either. It just said American Oak casks. So they could be first use even. I don't know. If you know what kind of casks are actually used for the Glen Scotia 15, please let me know in the comments below. Now, Glen Scotia is one of the smaller distilleries in Scotland, but it is an important distillery in Campbelltown. It's been around since the 1830s and has kind of had a turbulent life. In 2014, Glen Scotia was bought by the Loch Lomond Group and a lot of the processes and everything else were restored. The whiskey production came back up and it looks like we have the results of this rebirth here in a glass in front of us. One of the cool things I've read about Glen Scotia is they do small batch processing, which means that they're taking more time with the amount of whiskey that they're producing. When I usually think of Campbelltown, I think of a peated whiskey. And for me, Campbelltown has a unique peated note to it. Now, Glen Scotia produces both peated and unpeated whiskeys. This is an unpeated whiskey. I think their peated run is a short time of year, maybe six weeks or so and then they go back to the non-peated distillery production. All right, let's dig into this. I'd love to know what kind of whiskey I purchased on this exceptional run to the whiskey shop in San Francisco. And you know, I know I know it's not a peated whiskey. I've said this before in other videos. I get this note that reminds me of a tire store. And now if I go in deeper, it's less like that and I'm getting sweeter notes and I'm getting more of a, uh, a leathery note instead of that, that rubbery note. But a lot of the Campbelltown distilleries, they, they trigger that in my brain and, and it's, it's, it's just weird. Brains are weird. <laughs> my brain's especially weird. <laughs> and this note is actually quite mild. There's a nice, nice citrus note off the top and I wanna say even a little bit of pineapple note. Yeah. Yeah, that is weird. I'm definitely getting pineapple. I, I don't get pineapple often on a whiskey. Ooh, I like that. That's kind of cool. I love it when I can discover a unique note in a whiskey. And there's some, uh, it's, it's not as malty as I was expecting. 
citrus and pineapple and there's a it's kind of a grassy note underneath but it's very mild it's kind of like peaches to me and forget that whole tire store stuff that only happened on the first nose and it's gone i don't smell that anymore all fruit and with a little bit of grassiness to it the wood spice is right up front so i'm not getting a lot of finish right now but i'm getting a lot of spiciness at the front of my palate and it's weird because for all the pineapple and and peaches and uh, fruity notes that i got on the nose i'm getting very few fruity notes here i'm getting spice uh, a ginger spice and i'm getting the oak spices and i'm getting a uh like a tannin dryness to my tongue so it's it's kind of strange because the nose is very misleading and the nose is beautiful i i don't know if i like having the two sides of the coin like that um i guess i do i don't know let me see yeah i guess i do the more i taste it the more finish i'm getting very oaky it's finishing better now first few sips were a little light on the finish a lot of the front cinnamon and wood spice not a lot of fruit on that taste the fruit is all on the nose and it gives you that feeling that you're going to have a fruity whiskey and you're not this is not a fruity whiskey but it's a good whiskey I, i'm enjoying it so far if there's a sweetness on the taste it's that caramel sweetness but then the spice the cinnamon the oak really consume your taste buds so you're not left with any of that sweetness. And it really is drying out my mouth. I think I'd like to drop a little water in this, see what that does to it, because I'm not experiencing uh, any of the sweetness that I would expect it on the nose from this. Not that there has to be. I mean, maybe you don't want a sweet whiskey. I'd, I'd love to know your thoughts if the Glen Scotia has been in your cabinet. Have you tried the 15? Let me know in the comments below. The nose is still sweet. I really like it still. I'm getting even a little bit more citrus than I was before. Less sweetness from my pineapple note. And the taste is less spicy. So the water took the edge off the, the, the spiciness. Still dry though. It's really a, a, a tannin-like dryness of my tongue. I should have I should have had some of the, the Parmigiano cheese that I had from last week's video and, and tried it with this, but I'm afraid that it's a dry cheese and this is a dry whiskey. So I may want to pair it with more of a creamy cheese to try to get some flavors out of that. This might even go good with dark chocolate. There's that less sweet flavor profile to it. And I think it could use something like a pairing that would really bring that out. I like the Glen Scotia. Uh, would I buy this again? I don't know yet. I haven't spent enough time with it. My first impression is I love the nose. I love the flavors of it. And they're just a little confusing because I wasn't expecting to be hit with both sides of that. I kind of thought, ooh, here is a nice sweet whiskey. And pineapple notes are something I don't get very often. So it really was a nice surprise. And then I get this dryness and this spiciness and this, this oakiness. And I don't know, sitting with it, I'm, I'm really kind of enjoying it. So I'm thrilled that I bought it. And I'm thr thrilled that I bought the Glengarry last week because both of them have been lovely new experiences for me. And every so often when you're in a whiskey shop, sometimes you just have to go with your gut and say, hey, here's a couple bottles I've never seen before, but they got age statements on them. They look like they're non-chill filtered. Maybe they're good quality whiskeys that I'm just missing out on. and. This is a new experience that I'm thrilled to have and I'm thrilled to share with you. So if you like this video, if you like my sharing of new experience of whiskey, please give me a like on it. It really helps spread these videos around YouTube and grows the Whiskey Riffs community. And I appreciate everyone that subscribed to this channel and helped it grow. And until the next video, take care of yourself. Take care of those people around you and cheers. growing on me. I'm going to sit with this one. I think it's going to be really good later. I'm really glad I bought it.